Hi, Miss Derek. You're sitting in my spot. Can I, can I jump in here, buddy? Uh huh? I'm just gonna have to force you. Okay. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everyone. And for this week's video, we are gonna be doing round two of questionnaires. I did 50 facts about me recently, and I got a lot of fun questions um, in addition to that from viewers. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for responding. Let's jump into these questions. Number one, have I ever run a marathon? No, I have not. Uh, to be honest, I probably never will, unless I have some serious motivation. My workout routine in general, I think this would be great for a future video, so I am gonna work on that. I split up between different muscle groups, so a lot of times I'll do like a chest or chest and bi or chest and triceps, and then maybe a back day or maybe add on a group to that and maybe do shoulders and calves or throw some abs in there, do a leg day, you know. And for legs, I do most of my legs in one day. Sometimes I'll split it up and do like quads, glutes, and then I'll do like hamstrings and calves and every once in a while I'll do some deadlifts. But it really just, it's, it's a muscle group split. I don't do a lot of cardio, uh, but that's pretty much what I'm doing when I go to the gym. Hey, little nugget. Henry's gonna be very interactive. Have I been told I look like Henry Cavill? Yes, many times. I get that on a very regular basis. And yes, it is ironic because I am from Kansas as a Superman, so there you go. This is a funny story. I was in the Philippines and I was staying on the island of Palawan. And there was a couple of people working at the hotel and they literally didn't believe me when I told them I wasn't Henry Cavill. They thought, no, you are Superman. You're Superman. I'm like, no, I'm not. I should have just taken it and rolled with it, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't let them actually think that. Will I ever do a photo shoot with puppies wearing a Speedo? Don't hold your breath, that's probably never gonna happen. But thanks for asking. The coolest place I've ever traveled to, that is really tough for me. I find something to appreciate everywhere I travel. And the first place I ever traveled was Australia. I was all over that country, up and down the East Coast, the West Coast, the top end, the dead center along the South. I mean, I loved it, that was super special for me because that's where I got my travel bug. The next big trip I did was actually in Tanzania, and that's where I did my first game drives and really saw the, the big game in Africa. That was very special. I love Southeast Asia. Uh, some of my favorite wildlife is native to Southeast Asia. Those jungles are gorgeous. The insects, the snakes, the reptiles, the primates, really cool stuff. So I, I can't pick a favorite, but those are some of my favorites. Brazil and South America is also incredible. I mean, I love Central America. I really, I, the list goes on. I cannot pick a favorite, but there's something to appreciate about everywhere I've been. I've been to over 30 countries, by the way. I was 29 years old when I graduated vet school from Colorado State University. Have I ever been to Michigan? Yes, I have actually. I did a short road trip there back in 2004, I think, and we camped out at... I don't remember. Skaney. We camped out at Lake Skaney or Skaney Lake or something along northern Michigan. It was totally random. It was very pretty actually, so yes to that. My undergrad major was called eBio, and that stands for Evolutionary and Ecological Biology. And that was at the University of Colorado at Boulder. I've had Henry since he was about five months old, and that was almost 10 years ago. I got him from, from the Boulder Humane Society. Henry, by the way, is a Chihuahua mixed with probably, I would guess, a Toy Fox Terrier. I don't know for sure. I haven't done any genetic testing on him, but if you look at him, he's really got a, a little bit from both breeds, in my opinion. Do I think it's better to humanely euthanize versus natural death? Uh, you're asking a veterinarian, and I most definitely know it's, it's most definitely beneficial to euthanize humanely over letting pets die naturally. Dying naturally is not, not such a nice thing with certain terminal diseases, okay? There's no reason to let an animal with kidney failure, heart failure, cancer, things that are gonna get them in the end, suffer through those final stages. The very final stages up, through, up to death are by far the most uncomfortable, the most painful. If we know a pet has these issues and things aren't gonna get better, they're only gonna get worse, by far the best thing you can do is, is put that pet out of its misery. And they can thank you for an eternity for that. So, absolutely, firm believer in humane euthanasia, and I, I think anybody in the field, I know anybody in the field would tell you the exact same thing and agree with me on that. So I hope that makes sense, but most definitely a believer in euthanasia. I can't stress that enough. I was a personal trainer before vet school. I love fitness and exercise, and I had a couple different certifications. Uh, general uh, personal training certification, I had a sports-based and an injury-based certification on top of that. And I loved it. I, I, that was a really fun career. I mean, people 
basically pay you to spend time with them and teach them how to exercise and, and, and have a good diet and, and live a healthy lifestyle. So that, that would be probably what I'd be doing if I wasn't practicing veterinary medicine and surgery. The number one thing on my bucket list is to see a king cobra in the wild. I've been obsessed with that snake for a very long time and if I could actually see one in the wild where they're native, which is pretty much uh, southern and southeast Asia, I would be, I would be very happy. <laughs> Have I done emergency veterinary work? The answer to that question is yes. During my first year at a vet school, I would do four overnights in a row for one week of every month and I was all on my own. I was completely by myself and it was, it was some of the scariest, most stressful, <laughs> intense moments of my life doing that. Uh, I grew a lot as a veterinarian. I recommend doing emergency veterinary work if you're going into practice as a veterinarian. I think you learn a lot and you gain a lot of important skills and you get a lot more comfortable with emergency situations which can be quite frightening when you're not used to them. Is seeing exotic animals necessary when you're a veterinarian? The answer to that question is no. You don't have to see exotics. There's plenty of vets. I have plenty of colleagues, classmates, friends, and they don't see really exotic animals. They see dogs and cats, or maybe they see bunnies, or maybe they have an interest in birds, or, or other animals, but really you can see any species you want or not see any species you want. Would I ever act in a movie? I've never thought too hard about this, but I'm, I'm certainly open to it. I mean, it certainly depends on what the role is, and I'd probably have to get some lessons because I'm a terrible actor. What's a typical day at work? That's a great question and it probably best answered by another video. So I do appreciate that question and I, I think I am gonna do another video on that. Just to give you a basic idea, it depends on whether I'm seeing appointments or surgeries in that day. More days than not I see appointments, so I get to work usually around eight o'clock. I see appointments that are about a half hour long through one of my lunch break. Over lunch, uh, if I don't have any procedures or anything I need to do, I usually duck out and get a nice uh, gym session in, get a little workout in, come back refreshed for the afternoon, and then see appointments in the afternoon. Every once in a while there's procedures mixed up in there and so I'll block off time to do those. On a surgery day, I'm basically doing surgeries all day. So it really depends on what's on my docket and what needs to be done. And sometimes if I finish my surgeries earlier, I'll, I'll see some appointments that afternoon. But that's just a basic sense of what it's like to be a vet for a day or as me for a day. I also do a lot of veterinary work when I travel. I like to volunteer at wildlife rehab sanctuaries. Sometimes I'll do some field work. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the work I've done with rhinos or at wildlife uh, uh, rescues, but um, that's, that's, any day can be different. You never know what you're gonna get into on those days. But, but to answer your question, at the hospital, Kaneha Valley Vet Hospital where I practice, you know, appointments or surgeries or both. Have I ever fainted during a procedure? Fortunately, no. I've always been pretty comfortable around blood and guts and gnarly stuff, and to be honest, I would be more likely to faint from being hypoglycemic or something. I, I'd be more likely to faint if I just hadn't had enough food or water for too long then I might pass out. Luckily that hasn't happened and I stay pretty well fueled, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not one to faint from gory things. What hair product do I use? I use Crew Fiber. I've been using this stuff for years. I love it. It's compatible with my hair, at least I think it is. So someone asked if I've ever tried Dutch licorice. And the answer to that is no, but I'll have to give it a try, so thank you. Where do I want to travel and I haven't been? That is a very long list. Two countries that are pretty high on that list. Number one is Madagascar. And another one is India. I've not been to either of those places and they both look like they have incredible wildlife and, and some really neat culture, especially India, but really both, they look incredible. Do you have to sacrifice personal and family life in becoming a veterinarian or as a veterinarian? The answer to that question is to some degree, yes. When I was in vet school, I can't tell you how many times uh, people were going out or being social or I had friends doing a trip somewhere or something was happening then I knew if, if I do that I'm going to sacrifice you know a little bit of my education and my grades and I wasn't smart enough to just have a photographic memory and just you know put it all together on a test I really had to take a lot of time to study to, to just be able to pass vet school so for me yeah there was some sacrifices and I mean I can't stress enough that it was so worth it if I was a superhero who would I be probably Superman I've always loved Superman. I used to throw my bib backwards, you know, ever since I knew what I was doing as a kid and run around the house flying around like I was Superman. So, you know, and again, being from Kansas, people tell me I look like Superman, so I think, I think it's just meant to be. What's my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Awesome question, and I think it just depends on my mood. If I'm feeling like a bad boy, maybe it's Raphael. If I got my nerdy side, it's Donatello. If I'm feeling funny, Michelangelo. 
I feel like I can relate to all of them. As a kid, I, probably my favorite actually was Leonardo. He's the leader, he has those big samurai swords, and I thought those were just super bad. So if I had to pick one, maybe Leonardo. How old am I? I am 33 years old. I just had a birthday on December 12th. What is the most intense surgery to do as a vet? In my opinion, I think neural surgery is really gnarly when you're operating on the brain or spinal cord. Eye surgery is very intense. And gallbladder surgery is a very scary one inside the abdominal space. I think certain orthopedic procedures are really intense. I don't do a lot of those and I just listed really any of them. The only I do some orthopedic stuff with knees and some exotic fractures but I don't touch brains, spinal cords, eyes, hearts, gallbladders. I'm not doing that. You need to be a board certified surgeon to do that. Very few general practitioners do that surgery. So board certified surgeons are basically people that they did a special, a general internship after vet school and then they did a specialized internship often and that's like a surgical internship for another year. And then they do another three years in a residency where they're doing all surgery at a university or a very busy specialty hospital. These people are very experienced surgeons and they're the ones that are going to be tackling those very intense procedures. My first pet was actually a little bunny and his name was Paco and I think I was like two years old, maybe younger when I got him and I absolutely loved him. I don't remember him super well but my mom said I was very gentle with him and she was so proud. <laughs> what is the toughest subject in vet school? I think it depends. That's not really a black and white answer to that. The toughest one for me personally was immunology. I don't think it's a particularly challenging subject. However, I had a, uh, the professor I had was really not suited to be a teacher. He was great in research, very accomplished veterinarian, but he was not a good teacher. So that, that subject I struggled with. Uh, anatomy is also very challenging. I love anatomy and I don't think it's any more challenging for me than anybody else, but it is amazing the number of things you have to remember just to get through that course. Why did I choose CSU, Colorado State University for vet school? The answer to that is, number one, it was in-state tuition. I'll get to that in a second. Number two, they have a terrific exotics program. And uh, number three, I love Colorado and I love Fort Collins. Back to the tuition, vet school is very expensive. You're gonna get in a lot of debt if you go to vet school, okay? And you need to realize that when you actually become a vet, you're not making a ton of money. You're making substantially less than human doctors, and maybe a lot of people don't know that. So the debt to income ratio is actually really skewed. It's really gnarly for vets. They're in, these days, around a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of debt. Some students going to private schools are over $300,000 worth of debt. And they're going to work at jobs where they make anywhere from 60 to 80 or 100, maybe a little over 100,000 a year as an associate, um, depending on what kind of vet they are. So. That's something that you really need to keep in mind if you want to go to vet school. You really need to weigh out the finances and see if this is practical for you. I don't want it to discourage you or tell you that's why you shouldn't be a vet, but it's a realistic thing that you do need to consider. I hope that makes sense. Where do I see myself in 20 years? That is an awesome question. I don't, I don't have an exact answer for that. I really want to do big things for wildlife conservation, so I hope, I hope I've made a substantial difference in that world by then, and I hope then I can also just spread a positive message for veterinary medicine in general and be a positive face in the profession of veterinary medicine. So th those, are, those are my two big broad goals in a nutshell. How did I get interested in working with exotics? I've always had a passion for exotic animals. Ever since I was a little kid, I was always looking for critters in the backyard like snakes and turtles and insects and all kinds of wildlife. And I've always had a big appreciation for exotics and always knew that whatever I did, whether it was personal or hobby or profession, they were going to be a part of my life. I ended up choosing to become a vet and so they're a big part of my life and I get to work with them on a regular basis. But it's always been a passion of mine to work with exotic animals. Again, Colorado State has great exotic, uh, exotic medicine options. You know, they have an exotics rotation. I took that probably more than anybody in my class when I was in vet school. I also did other externships at zoos and all exotic private practices. I also took every course I could in the classroom for exotic animal medicine in vet school and just knew that was gonna be a part of my profession. My last and final question, how do I become a vet? And this is my favorite question, I get it almost every day. My answer to you is, you should definitely watch one of my other videos, it's a question and answer video, and it is called, You Can Be a Vet. So scope this one out, it's a really cool video, I have it posted on YouTube, and I basically lay down 
the things you need to do to become a vet and my story in becoming a vet if you want to do the sort of things that I do. So I hope you watch that. I hope you enjoy it. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for submitting questions. I love sharing myself with you guys, so I hope, I hope you enjoyed watching and have a wonderful week. Okay, Henry. Can you say goodbye? Henry says bye-bye. We'll see y'all next time. <laughs>